Hi, this is George Ray with the Evolve Academy. Welcome back to our Novastar Smart Training videos. This is part four, where we're going to cover data connections, adding cabinets, and how to track port loading in Smart. Before we get to Smart, let's look at what you, the, the limitations that you have when you do cabinet connections inside LCT. So here's LCT in standard configuration mode. Every cabinet in LCT that's in a row has to be the same height. So here, the top row of cabinets is 160 tall. Now I can change the height of another row. So the bottom pixel, the bottom row of cabinets is 320 pixels tall. And you can see that here in the height 320. Everything in this row has to be the same height. Everything in this row has to be the same height as the row. Same is true with, with cabinet widths. Each column, everything in that column has to be the same width. So these cabinets here are 160 pixels wide. The last column I've adjusted so that they're 128 pixels wide. So you do have some flexibility, but it's limited by this row and column limitation. The other limitation in LCT is when you do blank tiles for negative space, those blanks have to conform to that same limitation. So this blank is 128 wide and 320 tall because the height is set by this row and the width is set by this column. Now let's look at a negative space configuration in SMART. So here in SMART I have a configuration with multiple size cabinets. I've got some 320 by 160 cabinets here along with a whole bunch of 128 by 128 cabinets. They are adjusted and wired together and everything will work just fine. There's no restrictions on these cabinets have to be the same height as these or that these cabinets, the 160 wide, have to be the same width as the cabinets that are below them. If you do negative space, we can blow them up and give negative space like this in any manner we want. Uh, so now let's look at our port loading with SMART, which happens to give you a tool to tell you in real time what it looks like. So that previous diagram here are the pixel counts of the cabinets. So I have 17 cabinets at 128 by 128. I have two 160 by 320 cabinets. So the total there is 380,000 pixels, which is 58% of our 655,360 port limit. Now let's look at the port loading gauge in SMART. Port loading gauge down here says we're at 95% of the maximum port load and the reason for that is negative space those pixels count but unlike an LCT where you have to actually calculate what you're doing in smart this gauge reacts in real time so as you add new cabinets it will tell you when you go over so real-time capacity for every port, for each port on every sender. Uh, now we're going to go over how to add cabinets to a screen. So we're going to add single cabinets, add arrays of cabinets, select, group, delete, and how to do negative space. So here are our cabinet tools in the upper right corner. We're going to zoom in on what that looks like. Here is a zoomed in view of that same menu. So first we have signal cab single cabinet selection. And the uh, drop down arrow over here will open up and show you all of the cabinets you have previously installed in SMART via cabinet management. That was covered in our last video on cabinet management. Batch add allows you to add an array or or bunch of, I don't want to say group, but bunch of cabinets. 
Uh, you can select number of columns and the number of rows of a specific type. And that cabinet grouping, when we did cabinet management, comes up in batch ads. So you can rapidly jump to either a manufacturer or shows cabinets that you've grouped under a specific category. After you've selected and dropped your cabinets in, then you get to pick the data port. We're going to cover the rapid connection and how to connect different types of cabinets. Port selection. First thing you want to do is select the correct sender, select the port, select the cabinet, and you're done. Here you can see I've got multiple cabinets assigned. All of those gray boxes are unassigned cabinets. The dotted line on the outside is the pixel space of the sender. However, there is a bug. In the current version 3.5.1 of Smart, this is set back when we did our setup at the very beginning. And there was that one section where it was set your pixel space and we said you must that's the only thing on that page that you can't go back and edit later well it is set there and that's where this dotted line box comes so that's your that's your pixel space that the sender is going to see however in the current version of smart when you save the program when you save your your show file and exit smart completely and restart it, this box will then default or change to the default pixel space of the hardware. So if you set a custom pixel space, it doesn't track. It is there as long as you have smart running, but if you quit smart completely and come back, this box will have changed size. Uh, it's been reported to Novastar. They are working on a fix. Cabinets that are assigned to a port are colored, and each of the colors corresponds to the color icon for the data port. So these three cabinets that are three different colors are assigned to actually three different ports, and down here in our port capacity uh, loading area, you see there's a little blue Okay, I've got a little bit of data on each of those ports. So that tracks in real time. Over here, there's a little thumbtack icon. If you click the thumbtack icon so it is vertical, normally it's at a 45 degree angle, so it will open and close every time you enter and exit the window. So every time you click up here, that would close, and then you have to open it again. If you click the thumbtack icon so it goes completely vertical, it pins it open so it's always visible and you can see it. There is also a thumbtack icon in the properties pane over here. It does the same thing. If you click it so it's vertical, it pins the properties pane open. Um, I prefer to keep them open because when you're working between cabinets, as you jump to the properties page and then click back here, the property slides closed and then this window changes size so it's just disconcerting for me I prefer to pin them open leave them open and work with them all the time so I have them visible so that's the thumbtack icon to do a quick connect of multiple cabinets sorry about that so first you select the port and the sender. So pick your sender, pick the data port. So we've picked port 4. Then I click drag around a group of cabinets. Uh, a lasso select from Photoshop or a lasso select from any other like Excel or anything. Just click the mouse, hold the left button down, drag around the cabinets. Then you select the data path that you want to use. So this is all leap normal predetermined snake paths. As soon as you click the icon, it wires up and you see my port loading gauge down here has increased. That's all you have to do to wire cabinets in Smart. I actually find it faster to click select and do a quick connection 
rather than clicking on each cabinet individually if I have a regular cabinet data connection direction. So if I'm going like all, all horizontal or all vertical, it's faster to select a whole bunch of cabinets at once than click on each individual square. Cabinet color matches the port color. And the port load is updated. So let's do this for real. So let's open up Smart. Here we have our Smart project that we've been working in. I have a bunch of 128 by 128 cabinets. So the first thing we're going to do is add a single cabinet. So we have some zoom buttons here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. These are 128 by 128. If I select a cabinet, it tells me what the cabinet is over there. So that's how I know what cabinet those are. I'm going to grab this AT3-1200, which is 160 by 320. Just click it once, drag it into the space, click again, and I've set one in. Click again, I've set another in. Go over here and right click. Right click cancels the add more cabinets. Now I can click and drag this cabinet. I'm going to set him there, and I'm going to set him there. I do have under the properties, I have it set to snap to cabinets, so that's why they lined up on the left edge. If I drag this one this way, it'll jump to the right edge. So it's edge-to-edge -edge alignment. Makes setting up uh, negative space and cabinet columns and things very quick and simple. So that's adding a single cabinet. Let's add an array. So first I'm going to delete a group. So I'm going to grab these cabinets here, and to delete them, I can either delete them, right click, and do delete, or grab and hit the delete button on my keyboard. That array is gone. If I go batch add, uh, those were the default 128 by 128s. Say I want to add those back in. So two, I'm going to type in here, two, click OK. This is showing me the upper left cabinet of that array. So wherever I want to put it, click, and I have added an array of two by two. So next, we're going to do a grouping of cabinets. So if I drag select, if I right click, there's a group icon. This will group those cabinets together. Gives me a colored pixel border. And it allows me now to move all of those cabinets as a group. And they are grouped together. If I click on them, I have a group color over here and a group name, so I could rename them. I can change the color of the border, and I'll change it to red just so you can see it. And when I click off it, they now have a red border, so I can have multiple groups with multiple names, and they're grouped together. If you click in the group, right-click again, and ungroup, they're now singles. I could grab and move them all that way. The reason for grouping is twofold. One, so I don't accidentally grab and just move part of a group. By the way, Control Z undid that move. Um, it also, when we get into rotation, will come in handy. So group is select cabinets, right click to group. Negative space. Let's do some negative space adjustments. So I'm going to take the bottom row and I'm going to move it down. I'm using the arrow keys. Moves one pixel at a time. I'm going to take the top bunch of rows and I'm just going to move them up by dragging and dropping. Then I'm going to take everything on this side. I'm going to move it over. And then I'm going to take everything on this side and I'm going to move this over this way, 
And then I want to take this guy. I'm going to move them down, 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 down. And I'm using the arrow keys to move these. And then I'm going to split this row and I'm going to just drag and drop. So that's a very quick negative space. If you click on these, any individual cabinet, it will show you the offset coordinates once we have them connected. So let's go ahead and connect these, even with the negative space. So port one, let's connect this bottom batch here. Drag and drop. So I've selected them. I've already selected port one. And I'm going to do up and down. So I'm going to start in the lower left, go up and head right. So that's this button here, and I'm done. So those are all connected. If I open up the port loading, I have 38% of port one done. Now, if I wanted to do everything, um, and again, if I click here, this is set at zero, zero, because that's the upper left corner, because um, that's the only thing we have connected. So let's take port two and we'll add just these two, we'll do that. Now when we go look at this one, this one now has a, a Y coordinate, the X is zero, so it's the far left because it's the most furthest left cabinet hooked up to the sender, and the Y is at 849. All of these are unconnected, those are connected, and we see our port loading information. Now I only hooked up two cabinets to port two, but because of all this negative space between them, I'm at 35% almost of our total pixel space. So that is how to very quickly wire uh, bunches of cabinets together. You can also so take port three and we're going to do a zigzag configuration over here just because sometimes you have to. So we're going to start here, we're going to diagonally here. I'm clicking on the, the circle at the center of each cabinet. And then when I'm done, it's looking to attach to another cabinet. Just by right clicking, it will stop that connection. So if I click, if I right click, the connection is stopped. Or I can come over here, select another port, and I'm just dragging from center to center. Right click to release the port. So those are, I've got one, two, three, and five. Let's throw something on port four. So we have wired up all of these cabinets. We see we still have plenty of port loading space and port capacity left. I can zoom out and see. So now we see that this is exceeding, these cabinets down here are exceeding the pixel space I've set for the, the sending card. So we're outside of the pixel space. It still allows you to wire them. It's a warning if uh, you have the cabinet connection on that first setup page in auto will not allow you to connect cabinets that exceed the pixel space. So that's why I always leave auto off. So this has been cabinet, add, you know, adding cabinets, adding groups of cabinets, uh, grouping cabinets together, adding arrays, uh, negative space, and all of this is uh, accessible offline so you can test show configurations uh, is this wiring going to work is this exceeding the pixel space of my sender um, and then of course when we're done go to project and we're going to save this one we're going to do save as and we're going to call this 
LED. Train two. Thank you very much for joining us. Come back next time and we will continue on with programming and smart. This is George Ray with the Evolve Academy. Have a great day.